Hey there guys, my name is Charles Phil. I'm a rig welder with Legion Pipe and Fabricators located in Nisco, Alberta, Canada. I'm going to be doing a 10 inch Schedule 40 duplex pipe, the 2205 duplex, 2209 fill metal. And uh, the welding helmet I'm going to be wearing in the videos here, weldlife.com, you know, you see it, it matches everything. So, well, let's get to it. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm washing from one bevel tip. I'm liquefying the bevel tip. It melts about 1 16th of an inch into that bevel. And then I, as I bring it over to the opposing bevel tip, from left side to right side, I'm dabbing into the hottest point on the weld puddle. So I can see the weld puddle just kind of slap back in there. It's like elastic band, snapping elastic band. It just kind of just drops in there, fills up the keyhole, and then I just keep using the uh, technique to continue on. This spot right here is getting a little bit tighter than it was when I first started, so I'll start going slightly up the pipe, moving from a slight downhill progression up to more more of a 12 o'clock progression. Still very, very fine side to side movements. Now I need a little bit more current, so I'm just gonna go side to side twice, and then dab in the middle, side to side twice, and dab in the middle. And that will just give me a little bit more energy. When I stop next, I'll just uh, take the grind out and knife the gap here. I'll fix the gap and land. So I'm slowing down my movements here dabbing into the hottest point and I'll probably stop soon here I still have a keyhole and I'm still the metal is still going it's still nicely flowing and I'll stop out here Basically, I'm just coming off the tack here, and uh, when you look at a lot of duplex welds, you'll see uh, on restarts there's always a blue tinge there. And the way around that is to, uh, you know, when you're starting out, uh, brush that area and remove any oxides when you come down the ramp so that uh, those oxides cannot be picked up and brought into the weld there. Let's see. So if you notice what I'm doing, uh, I have about 100 amps on the machine, set to about that. And I'm dabbing into the hottest point on the pipe, so the gap is not very wide, not very wide gap. I'm just using very minimal movements. I'm just kind of dabbing into the hottest point, which is in the middle. Now, there's, there's other areas that you can dab. Uh, if I dab on the very leading edge, uh, I don't get the full amount of metal that's going into the root pass. And I might get a really flush, uh, or even... Uh, a root pass that kind of slightly undercuts. Now, if you'll also notice that the, the weld puddle, uh, it kind of bounces back uh, when I, I'm removing the, uh, well, I'm breaking the surface tension when I remove the filament metal uh, from the weld puddle. It's kind of agitating it, but it, uh, um, I don't have enough current, so when I add, I have X amount of energy keeping the weld puddle as a liquid. And uh, well, when I add the solid mass of the fill metal to the weld puddle, uh, it momentarily chills the tail end of the weld puddle. And when I break surface tension, removing the fill metal, which is a solid mass away from the weld puddle, uh, it just kind of snaps back. Uh, it's very agitated. It's just enough to uh, uh, solidify the tail end of the weld puddle and allow me uh, travel distance. And that's how you get um, that's how you get uh, um, deposition over distance is just you're always manipulating the rate of solidification and the lithification of the weld puddle using the solid mass of the fill metal and chilling out the uh, liquid mass of the weld puddle. So this is a little bit wider. Also the uh, the bevel that's closest to me, so probably your right bevel, is actually the taller one. It's uh, at a little slight amount of misalignment maybe a 64th of an inch, a 16th of an inch at most. But um, I can kind of dab fill metal to the right bevel and just wash it down. But it's still just enough where I can add metal to the to the, um, the middle of the puddle here in a little single bolt bevels here. Now, if you dab the fill metal, so I'm always dabbing to the middle of the weld puddle. That's the hottest point is the middle. If I dab on, say, if I dab into a bevel, there's a good chance that the uh, the energy from the bevel 
or the uh, the bell of thickness of the metal and bevel will absorb much of my energy of the wall puddle. So the duplex, the, the roof pass here is uh, absolutely critical. But the, uh, the roof is nice. If I take my time, uh, I won't have to do any uh, any repairs or backgrounding or fixing. If I let a little bit hotter, then it gets to the point where the, the well puddle might get a little agitated, a little bit out of control. Usually, if this is a, um, I could handle maybe going up another 5 amp, just to kind of help the puddle wash out a little bit more. But uh, this is still an adequate welding current for uh, this particular uh, setup. Duplex to me is a very creamy well puddle, more creamier than uh, stainless. Basically, if I Keep the use. If I use the same technique that I'm using right here, like just keyhole and dab, then uh, the root path comes out more uniform. So essentially, this is just like a pattern. So like side, side, dab, side, side, dab, side, side, dab. That's essentially what I'm doing. I also want to talk about uh, purge lines. So uh, something I learned at UB College of Welding. So Gary is the one who taught me how to, how to weld at UB, and uh, took, uh, all. Series courses at UV College of Welding, uh, including titanium pipeline, STT, um, all the carbon tape, chrome, stainless, duplex, all that kind of stuff, the collaboration, and such. Aluminum, aluminum piping also. But um, one of the things is for, for purging. So right now I have two purge lines, and they are a quarter inch uh, diameter uh, purge lines. So I have uh, X amount of flow. Uh, so say for example, say I got like say 30 uh, flow rate of 30 uh, CFH, and um, compare uh, two lines at 30 compared to one line at 60. Uh, the six, if I have one line at 60, it's going to be very, very turbulent, and very aggressive uh, with the uh, argon that's going to come out of the uh, one line flowing at 60. It's going to be very, very aggressive, very sort of, and it's going to be drawing in the atmosphere into my uh, pipe in here. So I'll actually have a, uh, a terrible purge because it's just going to act like a vacuum and just suck in uh, oxygen into my pipe. Now if I have two lines, where they are low, both, both two lines, I have a slower CFH rate, uh, CFM. Anyways, if I have them at a fl lower flow rate, two of them at 30, which equals 60, There'll be a gentler flow, be very, very gentle. So I could either have uh, two uh, quarter inch lines at uh, 30, which equal 50, or else I could have, say, I could have uh, a short little pigtail that is maybe a half inch line. So I could have a half inch line on added to both quarter inch lines, which uh, the half inch line, or even a three quarter inch line, feeds into. Uh, the pipe. So if I have a bigger line that feeds into the pipe, uh, even with the same CFH flow rate, um, it'll be an even gentler flow. So for example, I have uh, two quarter inch lines, both at 30, feeding into a line that's equal to 60 CFH. Or else I have two quarter inch lines with a half inch pigtail on both, and the half inch is, is going into the purge area and feeding the argon and and both at uh, half inch lines at uh, 30 CFH, equaling 60. The half inch lines will be a gentler flow and cut down on turbulence, so we're not sucking the atmosphere, drawing the atmosphere from anything. So, when I increase the uh, size of pipe, I'll of course need uh, more purge lines. Um, say a larger diameter, I'll need like two, three purge lines, four purge lines, that kind of stuff. So, the more purge lines you have, you could have a, a lower flow rate and it, it'll um, have a very gentle argon flow and it won't draw in the atmosphere, won't create turbulence, it won't interact with your, your weld puddle as welding. It'll be very gentle. And just another tip for uh, purge lines and uh, using uh, bigger diameter uh, uh, pigtails if the person decided to go that way. Also, a person could use steel wool, stainless steel wool, on the end, which uh, the argon would not shoot straight. The argon would simply hit the steel wool and go every which way. You'd actually get a better quality purge uh, using steel wool 
I feel then over a diffuser. The diffuser is not too particularly fond of, but the purge line, I mean, the diffusers are not particularly fond of, but stainless steel wool I do like. Especially if you're doing like a, like a titanium uh, welding test or something, you know, 2 inch get 80. You have uh, stainless steel wool stuck down in there. The argons come and have to blow through the stainless steel wool and just get your high quality birds. All right, now this particular pipe here, 10 inch, schedule 40, duplex, 2205, welded with 2209 foot metal. Um, inner pass temperature is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We still have to do a whole bunch of different testing on it. So I either wrote the hot, I have one or two fill passes on it, already 300 degrees Fahrenheit, even with pausing, letting it cool down in between passes. So we're gonna stop on this pipe here and we're gonna continue on with another, another weld. So if you like the videos that we're doing, we're doing a whole bunch here at Legion Pipe Fabricators. Um, follow us on Instagram, WeldTube, also on YouTube, uh, WeldTube, and also Legion's uh, Instagram page is Legion Piping. And if you like the welding helmets that we have, a number of us are wearing in the, in the uh, videos here, weldlife.com. Purple Monkey's not included. Thank you.